today what we're going to try to do is create a very very vibrant green warm photo all right we're going to be playing with colors today so i'm just going to go ahead and dive right into it and first thing that i want to do is just activate Bruins ai i think that Bruins ai is going to give me a good starting point where it's going to brighten up everything and give us more information to work with at the raw level now i did shoot this on my sony a7r4 at a 4000 iso there's some noise in it but i think that it adds to the overall presence of the image i could remove the noise but i'm not going to worry about that i'm just going to let it go so once bruins ai gets done loading in then we'll continue on with the edit here Okay, so Bruins AI actually activated my no noise AI and it cleaned up the noise in the image and I'm actually okay with what it did. So all is well. Now, with that being said, let's go ahead and take a look at using the amount slider here to see if it will help me get kind of that contrasty saturated look that I'm hoping to get out of this image. Because when I seen this, I've seen a lot of green and the sun was poking or poking through. I don't know. Shining through is probably the better way of saying that. And I said, you know what? This would be really cool if I can make everything green and then contrast everything else around it. So that's what we're going to try to accomplish today. Now, one of the things inside of Bruins AI that I and many people don't cover is you can change the actual method. So usually Bruins AI... I mean, if, if we're being completely honest, this is how Bruins AI looks for many people. It looks like this. Just you click this little circle and it turns on. And then even when you expand it, it may look something like this. You may have local adjustments. A lot of people overlook the options. And so let's go ahead and explore that a bit. We're going to expand the options menu here. And underneath method, you can actually change how Bruins AI responds. So right now I have it set to Brilliance AI, but if I hit this drop down, I get AI auto and AI match. Now, what's cool about this is on one is going to look at the camera profile that you shot this in and try to match that JPEG reference file that's inside of your raw image to whatever it can make it kind of render. So it, it's trying to mimic that. And I know that when I looked at this on the back of my camera, I seen what I what I was looking for. And this is actually closer to what I was expecting to see in the image. So I'm just going to go ahead and select that. And now that has been applied and then I can minimize Bruins AI, come into tone and color and really kind of fine tune what's happening there. And one of the first places that I think everyone should start, regardless of if you're using Bruins AI or not, Nine times out of 10, you're probably going to stay on on one standard, but I still think that it's worth exploring the camera profiles. And one of the easiest ways of exploring them is to click on the profile and then using the down arrow on your keyboard, you can just kind of filter through these and you can see the different looks that I'm getting. Now, some of them are really overdone like this one. And some of them are a little bit more tasteful. In fact, I really like the way that this one works because it's brightening up the overall image and it's adding in some warmth. So I do appreciate that. Uh, I think vivid is what I was using on my camera and I get it. Those leaves are almost radioactive green. So maybe not the greatest, but we'll take a look at the camera vivid to see if that's gonna work. Now, camera clear is really helping with some of that contrast in the image. So these are all going to be different based off of the camera that you shot it with. I was using a Sony a7R4. If you are using Canon, Nikon, Leica, whatever it may be, you're gonna have different DCP profiles put into on one based off of your raw file type. So just keep that in mind. So this is the the camera profile that I had on my Sony a7R4 that led me to taking this photo. So it is a little bit brighter than what I was looking at on the back of my camera. So I am going to accept that 
And then I'm going to work on making this a little bit darker. So it looks like it's opening shadows. And I wasn't actually seeing this with the shadows opened up when I was out there photographing this. So I'm going to pull back on the shadows. And that instantly starts to bring the image back, at least closer to what I was seeing on the camera. And I think this is one of the challenges many people have with photo editing. They see something on the back of their camera because it's presenting them with a JPEG profile or at least a color profile. And unless you shot the image in JPEG, you're not going to really be able to see that. So then you have to recall it on your own. And that's why I wanted to show you up here in Brilliance AI that you can use AI match and it's going to help get you close to what you've seen on the back of your camera. It's not perfect, but it does get you close to what you see. And then I'm just going to go ahead and pull up on the midtones because I don't think those need to be pulled down. Um, although that is brightening the image and I don't want it too much brighter, but I'm not a huge, I won't say I'm not a huge fan. You don't always need to pull up on the shadows extremely high, regardless of if you're shooting raw or JPEG, doesn't matter. You don't need to pull hard on the shadows unless you're going for a very particular look, in which case today I'm going for a relatively particular look. And it's really just contrasted here in this tree with the light kind of reflecting through these green leaves and that they're a little bit more vibrant than everything else in the image. So that's kind of what I'm working with. And I think that this looks pretty good. So here's the before and the after. Now, this is obviously really, really strong on the greens. So it's time to jump over to the effects tab and add in one of the best color tools in on one, and that is the color enhancer. So what I'm going to do is minimize the color and the styles just so I get more real estate for my color range. And I'm going to start with the yellows. I'm just going to go ahead and pull down on the saturation pretty good on the yellows because believe it or not, inside of green, there is a lot of yellow hue. And that's what I'm pulling back here. And that's helping me get a deeper, darker, more rich green. And that's ultimately what I'm going after. So I'm going to also darken the yellows. And that's also helping with getting that darker green. So if I turn this off and turn it back on, you can see what's happening. Now, the trade off to that is if you had really warm tones in your greens from the sun, you're going to be stripping those away. And there's a way that you can bring that back. But just know that you are going to strip that away if you go into the yellow channel and you start to pull away from those yellows. Now, with on one, it does allow you to kind of define the range. So if I pull this to the far right, it's going to include more things that it thinks are yellow into the range. If I pull it to the far left, it's going to get very, very finite. So one of the things that I could do if I really wanted to fine tune this into a very specific range of yellows and you kind of just have to visualize the color that's being created on the screen when you do this. I could pull my range slider until I start to see some of that yellow come back and I'm not sure if it's coming through on YouTube. I think you'll be able to see it right through this portion here. But if I pull this down, you can see some of that brightness and the yellow is returning to the image because I'm getting a very, very small amount of yellows. Now, as I pull this up, it's going to remove more because it's selecting a larger range of yellow. So I'll pull this down just a bit. And I think that that looks good. It's always good to start with a before and an after so you can see the impact that you're making to your images. All right. So this is with it turned on. This is with it turned off. You can see the image is brighter. It's more vividly green. And then when I turn this on, it's a darker image overall. And the leaves are a little bit more dark, rich green. Now I can come over to my green channel and I can play around with the brightness. I don't think I need to change the saturation for me personally, but I can play around with the brightness and get this 
just a little bit darker. And I may even push the hues towards the yellows just a little bit to bring back some of that warmth. All right, because what I'm getting here is the greens that remain in the image are now shifting towards the yellow hue. And as I pull or as I shift that towards the yellow hue, I start to bring back some of that sunlight that was naturally coming through. So I think that that looks pretty good right there. And we'll go ahead and do a before and an after. Now, I want to throw a little bit of a twist in today's tutorial because I do explore inside of on one and I want to use a filter that I don't use all that frequently on the channel, but I do use it on my images. And that is the photo filter. Now the photo filter is a phenomenal tool. I'm not going to deep dive it here in today's video, but what I want to do or what I want you to know about this tool is essentially it's just a big sheet of color that goes over your image. So if I pull the amount slider all the way up, you can see I have blue selected as my color. It's going to add blue all over the image. Now that's just ridiculously way too much. But one of the fun things to do with the photo filter is work complementary colors in and just let that sit over the entire image. It just helps with a level of aesthetic. All right. So what I want to do, I'm going to go ahead and open up my color palette here and I'm using greens. Now, this color wheel is a little different. Um, complementary colors always sit off to or just on the opposite side of the color that you have primarily in the photo, which in this case is green, if you didn't see that, but that's beside the point. Anyway, green is the primary color. So let's see if something over here in the warmer tones, because if I were to cut this color wheel right down the middle on the left, these are considered to be cooler tones. And on the right, these are considered to be warmer tones. So I want to put a warm tone, which will be opposite of this green into the image. And I don't need it to be like crazy strong. And this is already giving that illusion of a warmer image because I'm putting this over the entire photo. Now, let me go ahead and turn this off and turn it back on. And you can see it's just putting like a pink tint over the entire image. And this could work well. It may not work as well. It just depends on how you want to work with the, uh, the tool here. Now I can pull up on the polarizer and that's going to make things darker and I can pull down and you can see it's going to make things a little bit brighter. Now, what I like to do is play around with the saturation of the photo filter as I'm applying this pink It's just applying a little bit more saturation to the overall image. And I like to blend that with the pink that I'm applying. Now you could also go the complete opposite direction and kind of do like a mono colored look, right? But that's not what I want to do. So we want to pull this down. It doesn't need to be really strong. And I don't like how it is impacting my greens. So I definitely, or how the saturation slider is impacting my greens. So I want to pull up on the saturation slider until my greens get roughly to where they were before. So if I turn this off, turn it back on, that's pretty close to where they were. And then I'll probably just pull up a little bit on the polarizer and that's going to darken the image down just a bit. But this is one of those things that if you ever look at an image and you're like something just looks different in the color grade, it's probably because they're playing with the knowledge of color theory and I'm still exploring that. I'm no expert at this and I don't mean to ever be an expert at anything that I teach here on this channel. But hopefully this is encouraging you to go and try to play with adding in extra colors to the image that weren't there originally. 
And that's essentially what happened with this pink with me applying that. Now I am using a solid filter, which means it's going over the entire image. If I click this drop down, I get a few different options and these are going to change the tools that I have access to down at the bottom. Now by color could be really fun. In fact, let's just explore it. So if I turn on by color, I'm adding in a, I'm adding in two warm colors, right? Because orange is over here on the right side and pink is also over here on the right side of this color wheel. So I'm adding in two warm colors, which is resulting in this image being that much more warm. Now I did shoot this near sunset. The light was directional, so it's likely going to be a little bit more warm. But the way that the bicolor color works is you get to choose two different colors. And then down here for the position, it's covering just the top half. All right. And I can move this around however I, I really want to. Um, if I wanted it to be over top two thirds of the image and have a fast transition, and I'm just going to crank this up, you can see what's happening. So the top two thirds of the image are receiving this effect with the pink at the top and the orange at the bottom. And if I rotate it, then I get the orange at the top, the pink at the bottom and then it's transitioning relatively fast and they have two thirds slow. So this is more of a gradient. And this is just a fun way of playing with color in your image. And if you were to use the by color option, my recommendation is to get these colors, you know, roughly where you want them to be and then back it off using the opacity slider because this is going to help it blend that much better into the overall image. So if I turn this off, you can see I'm getting this very green, vivid looking image. And if I turn it back on, I'm getting this sunset image of all of these green sliders here. And of course I could change the direction, but again, I went way further into the photo filter tool than what I intended to. This is one of those tools. Every image is going to need something a little bit different. There is no one size fits all. And I hope that rings, rings true for everyone here, knowing that there is no one size fits all when it comes to photo editing. You kind of have to figure out what works for the image you're working on and then go for it. But knowing the tools that are available to you will definitely help you get there. So if I turn this off, turn it back on, you can see exactly what it's doing. And I actually like what it's doing here, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and change the blend mode to color, I think. So I'm going to click the three dot menu or three line menu, click on blending. That just makes sure that blending gets activated up here in the properties panel. And then I'm going to click the drop down and I'm going to come over here to color. So now I'm not really messing with the luminosity of the image. I'm only adding in color. It's making the image that much more warm and I really do enjoy what I got. So here's the before and here is the after. Hopefully you found some value in this content. If you did smash the like button, if you're new here, consider subscribing. If you want to pick up on one photo raw, consider using the affiliate link down in the description box below. I do make a small commission from anyone who uses it and I greatly appreciate it, but all of this comes at no extra charge to you. Now, if you want to learn more about using on one photo raw and perhaps even learning how the photo filter can be a tool for your own images, consider signing up for a coaching call down in the description box below. And I'll help you learn how to use on one photo raw for your own workflow and images. And if you got questions, leave them in the comment section below. And until next time, I want you to stay inspired and keep creating peace.